the end. Israel's genocidal violence in Gaza has killed over 32,000 people, including 14,000 children and wounded tens of thousands more.
in motion, calling for a one-way arms embargo on Israel. This was a direct result of our continued pressure on the Reef office. <laughs>
but we are here to let them know we will not back down and we will not be intimidated. <laughs>
come on, come on up. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah. Leading up to the vote on March 18th, University Rosedale for Palestine canvassers collected and dropped off 1,100 paper pledges at MP Freeland's office. Visiting, visiting almost daily to let her know that University of Rosedale, along with the global majority, demand a two-way arms embargo, an end to Canadian complicity in this genocide, and a free Palestine! over here today. This is amazing. The turnout is so, so great. You all should be super, super, super proud of yourselves. This is awesome. My name is Sarah. I am a master's student at the University of Toronto. I did my undergrad at UFT. My friends, family, the university has always told me to be proud of UFT, that I should be proud to be a part of this prestigious institution. This university is shameful, and students at university, including myself, are ashamed to be students at this institution that is not only silent during an ongoing genocide, but also complicit in an ongoing genocide. Everybody move closer, please. Uh, the organizers are requesting that everybody... But many people do not know about UFT, including about Canadian institutions as a whole, is that they serve the interests of so-called Canada. They are an extension of the settler colonial Canadian state. For once, since October, Israel's colonial practices and policies in Gaza, in Palestine, have gone from systemic destruction to outright annihilation. To be more specific, all 12 universities in Gaza have been bombed and annihilated. Yeah. 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 Any longer. 
20 plus students came together and we decided that we will occupy President Mara Gertler's yeah. office. Yeah. And turn it So windows were shut down. We were trying to open them. They wouldn't let us. COVID is still around. Airborne illnesses are still around. Autoimmune diseases. They did not care. So no food, no circulation. We were running low. But guys, take in six months of consistent organizing and no response. Within 48 hours, Mary Gertler spoke to us three times. She responded to us three times and agreed to meet us to sit down, discuss our demands, and to put out a statement which will be coming out tomorrow. And so we need all of you. To name a few companies that the university invests in, Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, Hewlett Packer, these are just three companies that we know of. Again, transparency is a big thing. We don't know how many companies and which companies UFT invests in. These are just three that we know are complicit in the occupation of Palestine, that we know make drones used at checkpoints in Palestine, where Palestinians are surveilled and harassed on their own land. UFT uses tuition money to invest in these companies. We did not consent to our money being used to, on, in apartheid soil. We did not consent for our money to be used on occupied land to harass the occupied, to harass and surveil Palestinians on their own land. Hey! Hey! Shut down the war machine. I don't want to read out the demands that we put forth, uh, just so that if you're not aware of them, uh, you can get a little bit familiar. The first was to divest the university's endowment, pension fund, and other financial holdings from all companies that provide Israel with military goods or services which sustain Israeli apartheid, occupation, and illegal settlements in Palestine. <laughs> number, two, number two, to terminate all partnerships with Israeli academic institutions that operate in Palestine or sustain apartheid policies, occupation, and illegal settlements of these territories. Yeah. And number three, to publicly disclose all investments, including names of holdings and portfolio shares from endowments, the pension fund, short-term working capital assets, and other financial holdings of the university. Again, these are not difficult calls. We're literally asking where our tuition money is going. We're literally asking where they invest, and we're asking for them to make a statement about the ongoing genocide. These are not difficult calls. Again, six months of silence, but thankfully within 40 hours of occupation, we have learned as soon as you start to materially, in a material way, disrupt business as usual, we do get the attention that we want so that we can make a difference and drive change, starting at the institutions that we are engaged with and that we stand in relation with. and I want to share a few key, uh, key takeaways from that meeting. Number one, we have now confirmed that UFT is currently investing in companies providing military goods and services to Israel through the expendable funds investment pool worth $3.9 billion. <laughs> Number two, we do not feel that President Gertler meaningfully discussed our demands. Number three, President Gertler claims that he is not aware about what's going on and that Israel has destroyed Bullshit. all 12 oh, universities. Oh, we have been organizing outside his office for six months. We haven't had a week off. Everybody's been pushing their exams, getting academic deferrals. We have been organizing consistently. It's, it's not true. It's, it's a, like, there's it's a no lie. way he doesn't know what's going on. And he claimed to have no idea about universities being destroyed and about the threat to academic that UFT will establish the anti-Islamophobia working group, but there were no commitments towards enshrining an anti-Palestinian racism definition in the Constitution. And we do want to make it clear, anti-Palestinian racism is different from Islamophobia. There needs to be a category that addresses that. In the past meeting, we tried to get a commitment for another meeting. President Gertler did not commit to a future meeting or any ongoing discussions on divestment. 
he it is down. providing, like I mentioned, a letter tomorrow, which should, as he said it will, address our demands and what we brought forward at the meeting. Yay. And so we really do need all eyes on UFT. We do want to make sure that our demands are addressed at the very least. And this is the beginning. Divestment has not been reached. We have not been able to accomplish that as yet. This is the beginning of a long ride. And so we do need as many people on board. We need as many eyes on this as possible. We need solidarity from as many communities as possible. That is the only way to do this. Because when the people come together, when the people are united, they are never defeated. We know this historically. We must stick together. The meeting was extremely frustrating with President Gertler. However, we were able to obtain important information about the university and where UFT is investing their money. We ask that everybody over here follow at OccupyUFT on Instagram and at Toronto Students for Palestine on Instagram. That is where you can stay up to date with the organizing that we are doing on campus. Again, without solidarity, without communities coming together, sticking together, being there for each other, protecting each other, there is no way we will be able to achieve divestment. And without institutions like UFT, without Canadian settler institutions being complicit in these things, Canada won't be able to be complicit. And without Canada and the US and the war machine and Europe not being complicit in the apartheid in Israel, Israel will not be able to maintain its apartheid policy, will not be able to maintain its occupation. <laughs> for each other. We are here to honor the fallen martyrs in Gaza and to share personal stories of grief and resilience. The death toll in Gaza is now at least 33,000 people, including over 12,000 children, due to indiscriminate bombing, mass starvation, and the withholding of resources such as food, 
fuel, electricity, and water. We are now entering our sixth month of this genocide, and the grief we feel as a collective can at times be unbearable. Fortunately, to help guide us in solidarity, I would like to invite Kiwatana, a member of the GTA chapter of Every Child Matters, to help us acknowledge this land and open the space for us. Please give her a round of applause, please. Ani Boju, Kiwatanan Kwe Indigenous Kaz, Mishikan and Dodem, Mishpakotan, Wakwamakong and Dunjaba, Takaranto and Dao. So, what I said there is my name is North Star Woman. I am Turtle Clan. I'm from Mishpakotan First Nation and Wakwamakong Unceded Territory. I now reside in Toronto. I'm, um, I'm Anishinaabe. Um, I just wanted to bring to everybody's attention that we have a sacred fire here in the park every Sunday. The sacred fire is open to everybody here. Now in our beliefs, a sacred fire is a, is a portal between worlds. So this is a ceremonial place. We have four sacred medicines over there. We have sage, sweetgrass, tobacco, and cedar. The fire is always approached from the eastern direction. There are people there to guide you through the protocols. We ask that any women on their moon time, which means if you have your period, to please refrain from touching the medicines. Um, because you're already in a stage of power. You're already being cleansed. You're already as strong as you ever are. So you don't need those medicines and it, it can overpower them at times. So, um, yeah, my name is Kiwatanung. We have the sacred fire here over at the, beside the Banjara restaurant. So it's just your right over here. I guess your left, my right, and uh, to the west. And, uh, Everybody here is welcome to come to our fire. So I'm just going to, because we're doing a, a ceremony here, and we're going to open the vigil in a good way, I'm going to uh, do a song, if you could hold the mic for me.